Episode 2. Hello, welcome to Dogman Encounters Radio. I'm Vic Cundiff, and I'll be your host as we listen to eyewitness encounters involving one of the most terrifying cryptids, Dogmen. What is the scariest thing you've seen in your life? That's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? For most people, it is. For our guest tonight, Derek, it's not. Derek is six foot four, an experienced outdoorsman. He also has both armed and unarmed combat training. Now, what could make someone like that turn and run for their lives? That's not a bear, a wolf, a moose, any of the large game that we know of. On tonight's episode of Dogman Encounters, you're going to find out. While in the woods near his family's cabin in northern Wisconsin seven years ago, Derek and his cousin encountered something that he describes as being straight out of a nightmare. Let's bring Derek on and hear his story. Derek, welcome to Dogman Encounters Radio. Thanks so much for coming. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks so much for being so nice as to share the details of your encounter with us. Yeah, I hope that the uh how terrifying the encounter was proves to be just as entertaining for the listeners. Oh, I'm sure it will be. Please tell us what kind of experience you have being out in the woods. Basically, since I was a young child, I grew up with a family who's been outdoorsmen and uh, military background. I started actually started hunting when I was 12, which was just when we could go out in the stand and watch, basically. I did firearm safety when I was 13, and I've been in the woods every year since. Even by the time the incident occurred, uh, I was, I believe, 16, but I mean, I, I still had been an outdoorsman for quite some time, so I felt fairly confident that I knew uh, my way around in the forest. Most of what we do with hunting is, I mean, I've learned how to track, recognize game trails, pretty much anything that has to do with, well, generalized hunting. I mean, growing up in in the environment, essentially. Have you ever seen anything around that cabin that led you to believe that they might be around before you had your encounter? Uh, before my encounter, no, nothing really besides uh, just creepy feelings and whatnot. That's that's about it. But uh, more recently, after I had, I had told uh, my story to uh, my mother and my uncle, who was also sitting there, uh, my mother had told me about something that she had seen that my story had brought memories back up from which her encounter or possible encounter could be with something similar because of the way it ran, but she described as um, they were coming back from a deer run where uh, you go out in the woods uh, in a car or whatever, you look for deer just for fun. Uh, they were across the highway from Long Lake Road, which is what we were at the end of. They were in, um, there's kind of like a nature preserve area. Sometimes hunters will go back there and whatnot, but directly across the road, there's another road that veers off into um, thick forest. Uh, they were coming back down that road as it was just starting to get dark. And uh, actually, I should rephrase. I say they. It was my mother and my aunt who were driving together. But uh, they were driving back up that road, and they saw something standing in the road from, she described, probably about 40, 50 feet in front of them, came out in front of them in the road, and it was on all fours. And then it saw them because they had their headlights on, and it turned towards them and stood upright, bipedally, and ran towards them a good, like, five or six steps, and then dropped back down to all fours, and uh, continued sprinting at them, and then veered off and ran into the woods. And um, what she had described was dark in color, uh, probably gray, and uh, she said that when the headlight reflected off of its eyes, it had almost like a reddish tint to it. So, I mean, it could be 
something related to what I had seen because my first thought was uh, she had claimed that she thought it was a bear uh, for all this time up until I had told her my my story. And uh, when I had heard it, I said, a bear cannot do that. That a bear, when they stand upright bipedally, they're slow. They can't sprint, like what she described. Uh, I got a little bit of chills when she told me that. That is pretty creepy. Did you have any activity at the cabin that might lead you to believe that you had them coming up close and personal? Well, um, another thing I can say is that you should always trust your gut. So, like, with... Like, if you feel like you're being watched, you know, like the old gut feeling like you're being watched, chances are you are, whether it's from a bird or a mountain lion, there's something staring at you, or another person even. But uh, basically, uh, she had also explained that, which, what I had said before about creepy feelings, she said that uh, whenever she had stayed in the middle cabin room, uh, there's a window next to the bed, and they would always close that window because they felt like somebody was uh, looking through it, somebody or something, which um, I had felt that way before, too, where um, I'd always stay in the ed- and bedroom, which the window was up higher, where you'd have to be at least six feet tall to look through it. I'd always take the uh, the shades, the blinds, and I'd turn them up so that if anything was looking through, they'd be looking at the ceiling instead of down at the beds. So, I don't know, I guess it could be paranoia, or uh, there could be something actually trying to look through the windows at us. 50-50 shot, I suppose. Wow, that's interesting. Well, like you said, normally it's best to go with your gut instinct. Yep, exactly. I don't know, I always trust my gut, or at least I try to. Please tell us about the unarmed combat experience you've got. Well, I can uh, state by saying that my brother-in-law is a mixed martial arts fighter, so I got into it when I was about 14, 14 or 15, I believe. I mean, to date, I've done about six years of training in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and uh, Muay Thai kickboxing, but at the time, I had only been doing it for maybe two years, so I mean, I I was pretty confident about fighting a, a person, but not an animal, obviously. It's safe to say that you were in your element out there. You have the ability to defend yourself from most threats, that is. Like you said earlier, large animals, that's a totally different ball of wax. But you weren't exactly a babe in the woods that was scared of his own shadow and unable to handle most of the things you might be faced with out there. Well, I didn't have any weapons on me at the time in the woods when when the incident occurred, so I was kind of a sitting duck when it came to a large animal if a bear would have charged me or something. But nowadays, though, I, I don't. If I go into the woods alone, I always have my shotgun on me, yeah, or a knife or whatever, both. Yeah, but at the time, though, I suppose it could have turned real ugly pretty quickly. No, oh, I'd say so without a doubt. Okay, now that we've covered that. What chain of events led up to the moment you and your cousin had your encounter? Well, we're up there just for basic vacation. I believe it was sometime around June or July. I mean, this was uh, quite a quite a long time ago now. So I think it was around the 4th of July, but I'm not 100% sure. So, I mean, we had good foliage in the area and whatnot, but that's the reasoning for being at the cabin anyway. Uh, what we were doing with the forest specifically is, I mean, to, I, I suppose I can paint a better picture, though, about the cabin areas. We're about a mile or two into the woods from the main highway, and it's pretty thick forest, first off. But we were playing airsoft, which is plastic BBs and whatnot, and you shoot them at each other. It's like a game like paintball. We were just playing around, having fun. I mean, for background as to why I was out there, I mean, I think that, pretty much sums it up. We were just having fun. Whose cabin was that? My grandparents. Since now it has been sold, we no longer go up there. Was it sold because of that encounter? No, it was just financial issues. It's only been sold since two years ago now. So, I mean, we have been up there since since the encounter. Oh, you have? Yeah, it's just, uh, I I didn't really like going out in the woods very much up there after then, but if I did, I'd be on a four-wheeler or something. Typically, the uh, the noise of a four-wheeler spooks any animal that's out there. 
I'm not sure if you're going to be willing to reveal this, but can you reveal some facts about the geographical area of that cabin, where it's located, anything like that? Oh, absolutely. It's um cabin's actually on Long Lake in Danbury, Wisconsin. They might actually call it the town of Swiss as well, uh, but I, I think they border each other. But it was all the way at the end of Long Lake Road, so dead, dead at the end. So, I mean, it just goes the road right into, like, I don't know, probably at least 100 acres of forest before you hit another uh, side of town. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of the encounter itself, what kind of topography are we talking about here? Rolling hills, or is it pretty flat? Well, it's really thick woods. I mean, it is hilly back there. We had a trail that went around as an ATV trail around the whole property, and it was pretty bouncy. There was a part where you drop down an elevation about, I don't know, probably 30 feet, and then there was a pond at the bottom of the hill that we had to drive around. So it was a pretty hilly area, but where the incident occurred exactly, it was pretty flat. We were at the top of the hill looking off into um, the woods, which you could see maybe 60 yards at max. It was pretty thick which is what I'm used to hunting, actually. I hunt up north past Mille Lacs Lake up in Minnesota, if anybody knows where that is. It's uh, pretty thick woods up there, too, so it's pretty much the same. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota besides the sports fans. I know what you mean there. All right, Derek, it's time to talk about your encounter. I want you to start at the top. Please tell us about it, and please give us every detail you remember. Basically, I could start out by saying that we were, uh, me and my cousin, we were playing around with the airsoft guns, so we were in a firefight, which is kind of goofy, shooting at each other and being stupid for uh, being young. But um, the firefight took us into the woods because I was, I don't know, I'm, I got kind of too into it back then. I uh, dressed up in a full military BDU, I had the toe camouflage, he was in blue jeans, <laughs> So I had a little bit of an advantage once we hit the, the tree line. We we carried our uh, battle into the forest quite a ways. I'm, I'm guessing we were uh, probably 100 yards in, maybe. Yeah, I think about 100 yards in. We ended up stopping. We were at the top of a hill on the uh, furthest end of the trail looking over. Uh, it went... Pretty much the wood line, it went flat, and then it dropped down into another hill, which was the field we were looking into when we when I actually saw the thing. But uh, once it dropped down, it goes down to another pond. So I'm assuming that whatever it was may have come from the pond. I mean, it's a watering hole. But I don't know. I suppose I can't be 100% sure because I'm still confused as to what I saw. So we were chilling out in the woods. We had stopped our fight, which uh, we were just kind of standing there. Basically, we're sitting at this um, this turn in the in the trail at the top of the hill, and I've always been, well, I mean, as a hunter, you get kind of a, feel like you get kind of a sense, or uh, you're always kind of on guard. So I felt like something was watching us, and I thought I had caught some movement out in the woods, which is not uncommon. I mean, there's always birds flying around. Who knows, maybe you'll see a raccoon or something. No, what spooked me was we noticed that it was dead quiet, which whenever it's dead quiet like that, it means that there's a major predator in the area. And I can't, I mean, I can't rule out that maybe it got quiet because of us, because I mean, we're predators as well. Basically, we were talking, and I am i got a little paranoid because of the quiet. I noticed something moving, which, I don't know, I caught only a glimpse of it with peripheral vision at first. So uh, I was probably about 50 meters out, 50 yards out, somewhere in that general vicinity, and I was straight out in the field before it hit the, uh, the hill. I, I should probably describe it better. It, it's not really... A field that is forested, but it's just, it's less thick than most of the woods around you, so you can see through it is uh, the best way to put it. There are still trees and everything, so I mean, it's not like an open field. But the movement caught my eye, so I started focusing out there and looking out in that general direction, which uh, he's confused and he's still talking, so I shushed him. So I mean, I shushed him and, I, and he shut up quick, 
and I told them we were being watched, which was mostly a joke, I thought, but I mean, you still get that feeling when you're being watched pretty much whenever you're out in the woods anyway. But I figured the the movement that I initially got was probably a bird or something, so I'm just looking around like normal. But then I did notice something that was off in the woods, and remember, it is dead quiet at this point. It was it was probably at, at about 12 o'clock because we were we were looking straight out when we were talking. And there was a uh, large animal leaning against a tree. I'm sorry if I'm starting to sound a little nervous here. It's kind of making me uh, recant or recalling the event is bringing up bringing back some images that is kind of a little terrifying to me. Anyway, though, I had paused, or we had both paused from talking because I, I got him to quiet down, which was initially a joke until I had actually noticed that there was something leaning against a tree about uh, 50 yards out from us, or. Um, uh, I may have been closer, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, I'm just uh, guesstimating because it's been a long time since it happened. But the animal was, it was very large, uh, it was very muscular, not unlike, or it was pretty unlike anything else I'm used to seeing. I've seen bear and, and whatnot and it just didn't match. Uh, the animal itself, it had uh, reddish brown fur and it actually almost completely blended in until I managed to get a good focus on it, which I was wearing my glasses at the time, so I had pretty close to 20-20 vision. When I was focused on it, I was, uh, we were close enough where I could see that its fur looked pretty long, and it was, uh, you could see individual hairs pretty well, even though it was pretty far out, but when if I was focusing on it, though. I mean, I looked at it, and the first thing I noticed is it was holding on to the tree it was standing next to, and that its limbs, its front, its front arms, were they seemed unnaturally long, proportionate to the animal, which because it was like slouching, I, I suppose it would make sense if it was taller than I thought it was initially, because I mean, with how it was sitting or, or kneeling, it was probably four or five feet tall, but I think it was it was obviously because it was sitting down. If it were to stand up, I'm assuming it, it had to be at least six feet, maybe taller. But about the arms, though, I noticed that it did have formid- formidable-looking claws, which that's, that made me very nervous because, I mean, I've seen bear claws, which can be two or three inches. This looked like it matched them at least that long, which which could be deadly most likely is deadly to whatever uh, herbivore animals are in the area, deer or whatever. And I'm guessing this is what was hunting them. So it was standing kind of slouched down against the tree. It looked like it was trying to not be seen. It was trying to be stealthy, which would mean that it was stalking. I mean, kind of like a, a cougar will, they'll stay real low in the, um, in the foliage and try not to be seen. But like with mountain lions and stuff, though, cats, they typically won't attack grown men. So, I mean, you don't have to worry as much about them. This thing, no, I don't know. It was it was staring at us, and it was panting like a dog pants. So, I mean, we could see its teeth, and it had very large teeth. <laughs> its snout did appear elongated, like a uh, like a candid or uh, possibly a bear. I'm, I'm still not sure, but... I don't know, it just it doesn't match a bear, which is the only large animal that we have out there besides wolves. The bear in the area are black and they don't sit like that. They don't they don't sit on their butt or whatever and sit slouched against a tree or whatever. If it was looking at us it would have stood upright being a bear and then done a charge or something. Which actually brings me to what the animal did itself, which which is what got us freaked out because, I mean, when I saw it, I don't know if my cousin saw it for sure. He was just kind of standing there looking around. I don't, I don't know if he focused on it like I was because I was, I was in full camo and whatnot. I'm not even sure if the animal was focused on me. I think it might have been focused on my cousin because, I mean, the BDU camouflage tends to break up your form. So 
he would stand out more than I would. I mean, I'm sure it saw me, but it probably was more focused on him than my, than myself. So I, I said to him, we have to go. And I said it out loud, but kind of quietly. And because of my cousin already being kind of freaked out when I said that, he just bolted. And I kind of left me standing there like, what the heck is going on here? Because I didn't expect him to run as quickly as he did. He, um, well, he is a baseball player, so I mean, he can run pretty quick. He, he can outrun me any day. So I was like, oh, great. Now I'm, I'm the guy left behind. <laughs> is what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have to be faster than the dog man, unfortunately. Yeah, he just had to be faster than me. But the, the problem was too, is I, I also flashed through my head too, is like when you, when you come across an animal, that's hostile typically you want to back away slowly i mean like with bear and whatnot is you don't want to give them any reason to chase you it, it sets in the predator instinct if you run they'll they'll chase you which brings me to what it did because i mean he he bolts i looked at it for a good three seconds before it actually started running towards us which when it did it sounded like it dropped to all fours at first and then got back up to two which was kind of weird but like, I don't know if it did that to get kind of a good, like, sprint going. But, I mean, at that point, I mean, when it ran, I took off. So, I mean, I lost sight of it pretty quick. But I could hear it behind us crashing through the woods. But what I'm wondering about is, like, a lot of animals they will do what they call a bluff charge. And it means they will... Yeah, uh, it's hard to tell <laughs> the difference between a real charge and a bluff charge, though, because like a bear, you can't tell if they start running at you. If you stand your ground and if it's a bluff charge, they'll veer off at the last second and they'll actually leave you alone. But considering you can't tell the difference, it's just like you might as well try to back away. But because if it isn't a bluff charge, they're going to mow you over. That's why I was kind of wondering if that's what it did was. But I mean, I felt like the way it was looking at us that it definitely wanted to hurt us. But, I mean, there's a chance that maybe it was just defending its territory. It might have been just a, a bluff charge to get us out of the area because if the animal truly wanted to get at us, I mean, once we, we ran out and we got out of the tree line, it stopped following. So, at that point, I suppose it's possible that Maybe it, it, its intention wasn't to hurt us. It was just to scare us and get us out of the area is the way I look back at it now. But but still, I mean, when we when I caught up to him after we actually got to the tree line, I still yelled to him to keep going because, I mean, we were still within, I don't know, 10 yards of the tree line. It was still right behind me. So, I mean, he I yelled, go, 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 and we got out of the tree line. We ran right for the cabin. And I uh, got inside and shut the door. At which point, my grandparents were in there asking why we were looking panicked and uh, winded. And I knew they wouldn't believe. Obviously, they're they're pretty old-fashioned, and they probably wouldn't even believe us if we'd said we'd seen a bear. But I, uh, I mean, for whatever this thing was, I mean, I knew obviously they wouldn't believe us. So I mean, I told them that it was a bear, and my cousin nodded. I mean, this really does sum up most of what happened. It was a very short incident. I mean, it was probably maybe 30 seconds long because we got out of there pretty quick. We left it behind, and I knew that there was no way I could fight an animal like that. I was unarmed. The only thing I had was a toy gun. Didn't have my knife on me or anything. So, I mean, we got inside later that night. We discussed. Uh, me and my cousin discussed what we had seen, and we decided that it was best that we had not uh, talk about it to anybody for a while, and that's why it, it had been a long time since I had actually posted this story. It's been probably, I don't know, seven, eight years, something, something along those lines. Later on that evening, Derek, was there any evidence that it was still around? Did you hear any strange sounds outside the cabin? Any see anything when you looked out a window? If you were brave enough to look out a window, that is. I stayed away from windows that night, but I mean, we did have a few of the windows open, so we could hear any of the noises from outside. It, it sounded like 
the usual night. The only thing that was that was strange is the the quiet retained. We didn't even hear frogs that night. I don't think at all. Which I mean, we're on a right on a lake, and typically you always hear frogs at night. They're always croaking and whatnot. I'm sure everybody else who's listening can uh, can understand hearing that. If you've ever been to a a cabin out in the middle of the woods, you always hear something at night, which uh, crickets anything, which it seemed like it was abnormally quiet that night. I'm going to solidify that. It was just, it was bizarre. I mean, that's about it. I mean, it was it was a very quiet night, and it's, I'm not used to it being that quiet. It made me uneasy. So, I mean, we just, I think I was up until at least midnight just listening. Other than that, I mean, there was no, we didn't hear any footsteps around the cabin, nothing like that. So, I mean, nothing completely blatantly odd it was just really dead quiet i'm sure it's safe to say that night neither you or your cousin got a wink of sleep did you huh not a whole lot no i was pretty tired the next morning no we were uh i stayed up until i mean at least midnight just listening to the noises outside and then i'm i think that we had stayed up and watched a movie until like four in the morning or something before we did finally manage to fall asleep, which uh, we ended up getting woken up at six anyway for breakfast. So um, that wasn't fun. kind of sucked. <laughs> the next morning after breakfast, did you and your cousin go outside and have a look around to see if you could see any footprints, or did you just stay in the cabin for most of the day? Well, we did go outside and we, we did normal activities. Besides, we stayed away from the woods. We we went out and we swam in the lake and everything, but uh, the closest we got to the wood line was we had to go up to the shed to uh, get access to a four-wheeler, which is about 10 yards from the wood line. Even going up there, we're pretty on guard, but the worst thing that happened when we got up to the shed was there was a hornet's nest on the shed, and we all got stung about four times. That was unfortunate. Uh, no, uh, I mean, whenever you're in the woods, I mean, still, or even near it, we, we always feel like we're being watched. Fortunately, though, we don't have to deal with being up in northern Wisconsin anymore. Did it ever occur to you when all this was going on that this thing might not be alone? Uh, I don't, it occurred to me afterward, but at the time I was just, that, that was the only one I'd seen. But afterward I've been, I've been thinking that I'd done research on, on Canada's, which I, I mean, I, I suppose I didn't really need to. I mean, I already know about wolves in the area, timber wolves, gray wolves, whatever, and they all hunt in packs for the most part, except for occasionally you get a lone wolf, which is actually regarded as more dangerous than the pack wolves. They're more likely to attack a person. When I saw this animal, I mean, I thought it looked pretty canine. So one thing that terrified me about it is if it did get a hold of me or uh, my cousin or whoever, uh, the way they hunt is uh, opposed to big cats, uh, like big cats, they will kill the prey immediately. They'll uh, they'll go for the neck or the face. They'll try to suffocate it or break its neck. Canine, like wolves, uh, wild dogs, feral dogs, whatever, they'll tear the prey apart. Uh, they'll tear them apart. They'll tear them to shreds. They'll even start eating while the animal's still alive. Like uh, wolves are known to do that. They'll start eating a deer alive. So it's like if this thing acts like that, I mean, it would be horrible. I mean, it wouldn't. And that it wouldn't necessarily just kill you and have any mercy. It would just start just ripping you apart, which was just it's uh, gruesome to think about. I mean, bear are kind of like that too, kind of like canine. They just they'll just start eating too, which is terrifying. But at least with a bear, they're so powerful that they've been known to decapitate an animal from a swipe. I suppose these things, because they're candid in appearance, whatever this animal was. I mean, there's a chance that maybe they hunt in packs like like timber wolves or uh, gray wolves. But at the time, I didn't really consider it. All that was going through my head was get out of here, get away from the area, get safe. reason why I also booked for the cabin, too, is we used to keep a shotgun in the cabin, which unfortunately at the time, we didn't have it. So, I mean, my first thought was get the gun, but the gun wasn't in existence anyway, so it's not like it would have helped anyway. It was only a 20 gauge shotgun though, and from the previous story on here, concerning a 40 cal handgun didn't do 
much to whatever they had shot at the previous guests. Uh, I don't think a 20 gauge with bird shot would have done anything. I don't know. One thing though that I did just think of was shoot the while running too is to, to solidify the fact that it may have just been some sort of a bluff charge. The fact that it didn't follow us was this animal's fast. Just about any animal can outrun a human, so it's just like. If it really wanted to get us, it would have, <laughs> is what I'm thinking now. Uh, you'd think that it could outrun us anyway. It's just like you'd think that it would be right on us, which it sounded like it was right behind me when I, when we were getting out of the woods. But if it really wanted to get us, I think it would have caught up. Now I think about it. It charged you, and then it veered off into the woods, but as you were running, it was still following. I take it you were running down a, a trail to get back to the cabin? Yes, yes. Well, it was, it was, we were all still in the woods. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the way you had phrased that confused me a little bit. Um, when we were running, we ran about 50 yards up the main ATV trail, which comes out by the shed that I had mentioned before, and then to the parking area where we put most of our vehicles and whatnot. So, I mean, when, when we ran out of that trail, we ran between cars, and then, or, well, actually, let me rephrase here a little bit. We had actually, we paused at the entrance of the trail, which is about, uh, there's a fork in the trail, which goes left or right, and we paused at that fork, and that's when I told him to keep going. And then we ran out, but the whole time, it sounded like it was staying kind of in woods off of the trail behind us, because, I mean, I could still hear it running into trees and whatnot, and making a lot of racket as it was chasing. So I don't know if maybe it doesn't like open areas. I mean, who knows? You would have to really be in the mind of the beast to know what it was thinking. Yeah, because I, I know that a, I suppose a bear probably would have just ran right onto the trail and then we wouldn't have heard much of it at that point. But I mean, maybe this thing's smart like a cat. It wants to stay uh, kind of more in a secluded area. If it was off of the trail like that, trailing you in the woods, even if you would have turned around to look, you probably couldn't have seen it because of how thick those woods were, correct? Yeah, probably not. It, it was pretty pretty midsummer, so, I mean, there are a lot of leaves on the trees and stuff. I mean, we might have seen trees getting bounced around, but that might have been about it at that point, because when we had ran, it was in a pretty open area where we could see, but once we took off, everything around us got a little bit thicker. It's just kind of like, I don't know, we we would ATV through that, that open area where we had initially seen it. We had uh, gone through there a few times. That's why we knew that there was a hill and then a pond at the bottom of the hill, which actually made me consider that, I mean, ponds are watering holes, which makes me wonder if maybe it had just come from there and was drinking and just happened to hear us walking around and talking. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's there are so many variables, it's kind of hard to be sh- certain of anything. Are you starting to calm down a little bit, or are you still kind of wound up remembering all these details of that encounter? <laughs> I suppose a, a tiny bit wound up still, but, I mean, I'm getting a little bit calmer because, I mean, coming to the end of the incident itself. So, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, regarding remembering the incident, I mean, that was kind of, kind of, it's a little upsetting because, I mean, this thing just did not look natural, but, I mean, it did look like flesh and blood creatures. So, I mean, it's just like, uh, the thing that threw me off the most, that made me the most uncomfortable was how long its arms were. It just didn't seem right. It didn't seem proportionate. Unless the thing, when it stood up, was actually seven feet tall, which, I mean, then I, I suppose it could be, but but it was almost like, I don't know, it was just, I don't even know how to describe it, it was it was just bizarre. I mean, I'm 6'4", so I'm not exactly a small person, this thing looked like it had to have been at least my height. Yeah, well, when it was hunched over, it looked like it was maybe, I don't know, maybe like five inches shorter than me. It could have been when it was hunched over, but I mean, it looked like if it was were to stand up, it was at least my height, maybe maybe even taller, maybe a foot taller. I'm, I'm not sure. It was just, it was something that I don't want to see again. Oh, no one can blame you for that. That's for sure. Now, backing up, Derek, just so I get this straight, how far were you when you first saw it standing there looking at you? It It had to have been about 50 yards out because... I don't know, somewhere between 40 and 50 yards is what I'm, was what I'm guessing. I mean, obviously there's a give or, give or take ratio on it. Cause I mean, when you're 
kind of freaking out at the time. You can't be too too accurate with your estimates. I'm I'm assuming. You never know what's going through your head. I mean, all I was all I was going through my head is what the heck is that thing at first, and I was like, oh, that thing looks looks dangerous. I should get out of here. And um, which is, I mean, it really is the same reaction I would have had to a bear or a, or a wolf. But well, maybe not a bear. A bear, I would have been like, yeah, I want to get out of here. But I mean, instinct tells you after you research a while to uh, back away slowly with a black bear. Chances are they they'll, they'll probably leave you alone, but if they don't leave you alone, you gotta stand up tall and be real loud. But this thing, I have a feeling, if I would have stood my ground, it probably would have ran right through me. Yeah, that might be a safe bet right there, since you said that you were initially forty to fifty yards from it. That's a still a fairly good distance. I take it you weren't close enough to get a bead on what color its eyes were. No, not really. I mean, I thought that the eyes were kind of dark, but, I mean, I wasn't really focused on the eyes. I was more focused on looking at the way its, move, way its movement was. I mean, trying to judge its character, I suppose. I mean, sometimes, like, with people, you can you can focus on their body movement, and you can tell which way they're going to run or whatever. And I was kind of trying to look at it in that sense, but, I mean, animals are unpredictable, so, I mean, I was probably being kind of dumb. Like I said, like with the arms and then its teeth, too, I was focused on the claws and whatnot. I didn't really get a good look at its eyes, I don't think. I don't know. It was just, it really was a bizarre incident. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I don't know if I had to say, I mean, I did get one glimpse uh, of it that was semi-decent for just a few seconds, and I thought that its eyes looked pretty dark in color. I mean, dark brown, almost like a dog's eyes. I don't know. It's just I can't really be too too certain because it was really a quick look before I took off. So, as far as the eyes go, you said you were too far away to be able to know for sure what color its eyes were, but were you close enough to be able to see any type of emotion in its eyes? Uh, emotion wise, no, I don't. I I don't really think so. I think that the animal was just, uh, I think it was really animalistic. I think it was just, it was focused. And you could tell it was really focused. I, I don't think it was looking at me because, I mean, we didn't make eye contact. I was staring at it for a second there, and um, it didn't make eye contact with me, So, which brings me back to thinking that it was probably focused on my cousin. But the one thing that I did notice that really threw me off is how muscular it was. I mean, I feel like if you were to shave that thing down, it would have had a six-pack. I mean, it looked like it was just incredibly built, like uh, it was like a steroid freak of an animal. Whereas, like, you get a bear, and, I mean, they're pretty ugly if you shave them down. I've, I've seen a, a picture online before where um, there, a bear had some sort of skin disease where it lost all of its fur, and they're they're fat. They've got fat rolls. So it's like most animals look pretty ugly shaved down. This thing, judging by the way its mu- muscle definition was, it's just like, it was nuts. It was very athletic. Since you got that good of a look at it, Derek, when it stood up, you mentioned that it was up on two legs. It went down to all fours, kind of like in a sprinter's pose, and then it went back up onto two legs again. If you saw it do all that, it sounds like you got a pretty good look at it physical build uh, to describe the waist how did how would you describe its waist was it a thick waist or a thin waist i mean when it stood upright i mean i really only caught it for a second when it did that because i turned around and ran right away i what i saw was it stood upright and then all i heard was or I mean, all, I, all i all i i didn't really see anything of it after that i'm trying to think of how to phrase it best all i all i know of it was what I heard at that point because I heard it chasing, but when it did stand upright, it looked like it was built more in its upper body than it was in its lower body. It almost I mean almost had like a V shape to it. So it was like really I don't know, it was like really muscular upper body is what it seemed like. So I mean it, it seemed like it stood up and then it dropped down to all fours again and then sprinted and then at one point, I mean, it sounded like it was charging on all fours when I was running, 
and then at after that, it sounded like it almost was trying to match my steps, so like it was bipedal after that point, so it was like it was very quick. If that doesn't get your adrenaline going, nothing will. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the uh, I don't think a roller coaster could do it for me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I'd say so after being through something like that. Now, we've covered the waist. Let's move down to the legs. What kind of detail did you notice about its legs? Were its legs canine in appearance, or were they more primate in appearance? When it stood up, there were there were bent. So I mean, I didn't get a look at its feet or anything lower lower than than its knee, really, because of how uh, the ferns and stuff were were built out there. So I mean, they're pretty high. But I don't know the way it was standing, though. It almost looked like it when it stood up. It almost looked uncomfortable for it because it kept its knees bent pretty pretty far. So I mean, I don't know if that has something to do with the way the anatomy is of the animal, where Maybe its Achilles tendon is really stretched, kind of like a canine. And I, I can't really say for certain because, I mean, the, the legs were, it was kind of hard to see because of how thick the foliage was still. I mean, it was still near bushes and stuff out there, and the ferns were coming up at least, like, two feet. If the ferns were up that high, it would make it almost impossible to tell if it had conventional knees and a leg structure like you would expect a hominid to have, or if it had true canine type back legs that have that reverse knee look to them. Yeah, which is, because of the way it was standing, that's what I was wondering about, was like like the reverse knee look kind of thing, but I'm not 100% sure, obviously. It was hard to tell because of how high the foliage was on the ground. Between the stress you were under, the ferns being so tall, what you were faced with, no one can fault you for not sitting there and and observing its leg structure, so that's totally expected. Since it was so far away from you, Derek, did you ever smell anything? Nothing really. No, it was just the normal smells of the forest. I mean, we had wildflowers planted out in the area and everything, so I mean, the only thing, that right, I didn't smell anything bad at that point, but I mean, it was just regular, the, the normal smells of the forest, really. I mean, only thing I've ever smelled in the past out there is the occasional skunk. As far as weight goes, how much would you expect what you saw weighed? Well, I mean, judging by most animals in the area, I mean, like a bear, they'll start at 350. I mean, this thing looked like it, it if it were to stand up, like I said before, it was probably around uh, six to seven feet tall if it were standing upright and very muscular, which muscle weighs more than fat. So, if I were to guess, it would probably be somewhere between 200 to 300 pounds. I mean, probably 250, somewhere in there. All I know is it was big. It was uh, bigger than what I'd expected to see. That's about normal as far as weight estimates would go for one of these things. Everything that you're mentioning is pretty, pretty much in line with what I have heard. All right, yeah. It's just, it's just definitely. Uh, not something you want to come across. <laughs> Pretty scary. How about hearing? Did you hear it make any sounds while you were in its presence? I'm I'm not 100% sure because, I mean, when it stood up, I, I can't be completely sure about it, but I thought it might have made some sort of a grunt or something, but I'm, I'm not completely sure because, I mean, I was had the adrenaline going and everything, and I just wanted to get out of there. But other than that, I mean, it didn't howl, it didn't, I didn't hear it growl or anything, but when it was looking at us initially, though, when I first spotted it, I mean, it was panting. I, I could see that it was visibly panting, and it was showing its teeth, so I'm wondering if it was kind of snarling a ways out, but we just couldn't hear it, because I mean, how far away it was. While you were standing there, before you turned to run, did you have a chance to see if it was male or female? <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't bother even looking. I mean, with how furry it was, I don't know if I would have been able to tell the difference anyway. But no, I was just, I, my, my only thought was leave. <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really get a good look at it. Did you, before you wound up packing up and leaving that cabin, 
Did you ever find any footprints? Uh, after that uh, point, we didn't even bother going out and looking for them. So, I mean, I didn't have the, the investigator mindset at that moment because I was just like, I don't really want to go back out there and have the chance that that thing will come after me again because, I mean, if it was just doing it to, say, leave the area, I, this is my territory type thing. You don't really want to intrude on its territory a second time. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the idea of going out and trying to research these things in the field. That's right. If you know that they are there or have a suspicion they're there, it's my advice to steer clear. Don't put yourself in a situation like that that you might regret later on. Now, moving on, between the two of you, you and your cousin, did the encounter affect you or your cousin in the most negative way? Well, I mean... I think, I think probably more over me. I think that he, he never talks about it. I've asked him about it, uh, not recently, but in the past, and he prefers to, uh, keep it quiet. So, I mean, I think that he chalked it up to as if he had actually seen anything, he was just seeing things, and, uh, like he, he's called me nuts before for watching Bigfoot shows and stuff after the fact. So I think that, uh, he just, chooses to forget about it just like me though it's just like i don't i don't know i'd rather be aware of a danger than unaware i, I mean people say ignorance is bliss but it's just like i disagree <laughs> i agree too if something is out there like that i definitely want to know i don't blame you please tell us about the after effects of that encounter for example has it changed the way you act or the things you do in the woods. Well, uh, since then, I'm, I've gotten a lot better at uh, tracking and and whatnot. I mean, for hunting and whatnot. So, I mean, like on our hunting property up north, for example, we've got cougar in the area now and and um, wolf and whatnot. But the only reason I know about them is due to tracks. I found their tracks. So, but as for like the after effects specifically from that, though, I the way I look at it is most animals, if it's a normal animal, they won't attack if you're in a group of people, typically, unless they're extremely hungry. Like, I mean, a bear, they're known to do it, but like the like grizzlies and whatnot, but that's usually under very um, uh, specific circumstances. So, I mean, like if it's a cougar or something, if you're walking with a partner, chances are they aren't going to mess with you. Wolves probably won't mess with you if you're with a group of people. So, like, if I'm going out into the woods, the only time I ever go out unarmed now is if I'm with a group of people. If I ever go out alone, I always have either my shotgun on me if I'm out doing grouse hunting or whatever, some sort of bird hunting. Or if I uh, don't have the opportunity to have a gun, I'll carry one of my combat knives. Which, I mean, a knife probably won't help you too much against a, a large animal unless you get a really lucky shot on it. Now that I think about with how built that thing was, though, I mean, I don't even think the shotgun would do much to it. But, I mean, loud noises tend to scare away animals, so, I mean, maybe if you shoot in the air, it might back off. I don't know. But definitely, though, I never go into the woods either alone or unarmed. Good idea. That's a very good idea. Did you have, or your cousin for that matter, have any lingering PTSD-type conditions as a result of that encounter? As for him, I don't know. He never he never told me about anything. As for me, I've dreamt about it a couple of times, but that's about it. I mean, uh, mostly just being more cautious is the main effect. Sometimes those dreams are terrifying. Well, <laughs> give them that. Do you still have nightmares? Not recently. I mean, I, I think I've gotten mostly over it. I won't be surprised after uh, talking about this more that if I have something to go on. But I mean. I had had uh, nightmares where um, something like the animal that I had seen had been trying to get into a vehicle that I was driving in, something like that. But uh, no, most of the time you forget your dreams after you wake up. So, I mean, it's, it's about it that I can recall. For anyone that is considering going out into the woods unarmed, after what? 
you have seen and know now is out there, what kind of words of wisdom would you have for someone like that? Uh, I would say preferably don't do it. But, I mean, if you're going to go into a forested area, try to make sure that it's city park or something, something that's surrounded by uh, by residential areas and whatnot. Like, there are a lot of parks like that around where I live where um, I'm fairly comfortable going out there. I mean, I still carry a knife with me. But, like, there's a there's a park near me where it's literally city all around it, but it's a good, like, I don't know, 20 acres of forest in the middle. So, I mean, I'm I'm more comfortable going there, but, I mean, if you're going out of town and going to go, like, way out into a national or state forest, uh, I would say you should probably be armed just as a precaution. I mean, even if you don't run into a creature like this, I mean, there's always a chance you could run into a mountain lion, wolves, a bear, whatever. So, I mean, you should always be armed regardless is the way I look at it. What kind of advice would you have for someone that finds themselves face-to-face with something like this? Uh, that's a good question. Um, something like this, I don't think, if it, I think if it wants you, it's going to get you. I think that they're very territorial from what I had seen. So my guess is, Try to get away from whatever it's defending. I mean, if, it, if it's defending its territory, if it's looking at you as food, just hope and pray that you can get away from it. Who knows? Maybe climbing a tree will help you. I don't, I don't know, maybe. But I'm guessing by the way that they're built, they'll probably be right up the tree after you. I, re- I really, I don't know if there's any, any advice I can give besides making sure you're armed. I mean, just to give yourself a fighting chance. Before this encounter happened to you, what would you have said to someone that told you that they had seen one of these things, if they would have told you they had seen or encountered a dog man? Well, I'm, I, I am typically skeptical about things. So, I mean, I wouldn't have laughed it off because another thing I look at it as, I, I look at it as, um, just about anything's possible. I mean, uh, until you can completely disprove something, there's a possibility that it can happen. So, I mean, I would have, I would have he- heard him out, nodded him on or whatever, but then afterward, I probably would have been like, yeah, whatever. But it's just like, until I see it for myself, I'm not going to believe it type thing. Obviously, now I have seen something that I can't explain, so, I mean, I'd, uh, I'd have to apologize to those people. <laughs> now you know they're out there. Uh, the, um, the only reference I had heard previously, which it was because it was 90s type stuff, was, um, I mean, it had popped up once that I had seen was the, uh, the Beast of Grey Road encounter. But I was just like, oh, whatever. The, the girl who had the encounter was probably drinking at the party or whatever, and it was probably just a, a bear or whatever. But, I don't know, it's just it's something weird. I, I even feel awkward even referring to it as a dog man. If you've noticed, I always call it the animal. Hitting on that idea about climbing a tree and the way they're built, something you said really stuck out with me, the arms. You mentioned how long its arms were. Have you been to my website, dogmanencounters.com or dogmanencountersradio.com and seen my logo, the picture of that dog man? I wasn't focused on the logo. I, I went onto the site to read a different story and listen to the uh, previous broadcast, but I was about that. I can pull up the site now and look at it. Yeah, if you can pull that up, I want you to do so and take a look at that logo and tell me how my logo, the subject in my logo, compares build-wise to what you saw that day. All right, I'm pulling it up right now. All right. Oh, um... Actually, very, very close. I would say pretty darn close. I don't know if the, the, I think the snout on what I had seen might have been a little bit thinner, but like the arms and stuff look pretty close. Um, The claws? Yeah, the the claws were long like that, and uh, 
I think that it's what I had seen. The ears were more upright, though, than than the way it looks swept back like that. But then I'm but. And again, I mean, the way that the picture is drawn on yours, maybe because it's moving. I don't, I don't know. I can't tell. A lot of dogs, like German Shepherds and whatnot, they'll put their ears up when they're listening too. So I mean, that could be why it was doing that. I just thought of that too. I mean, it could be it was listening to us while we were talking. That could be why it had its ears up that way. You saw it move its ears into the perked up position. Well, they're already in the perked up position when I saw it. It's just. That's just one reason why I was thinking maybe that that could be why they were up like that is because it was probably listening. How would you describe its ears? Uh, they're they're pointy. Um, they're probably a good two three inches long. Uh, almost kind of like the way like a German Shepherd with cropped ears looks, or a uh, a wolf for that matter. Now you said the dog man that's on my logo on my websites, it is close to looking like what you saw, but if you compared what you saw to the avatar on my Facebook page, how would that avatar compare to what you saw that day? Well, I'm looking at it right now, and honestly, it's kind of giving me anxiety because I think that uh, that's, pretty darn accurate the way that its muscle build is. The ears might be a little bit longer than what I think I'd seen, but but the way that its build is, though, looks almost exactly. I mean, it's got, I think maybe its arms might be a little bit shorter, but it's just it's massive, massively muscular, and it's the closest thing that I think I've seen so far out of uh, any other pictures. It uh, really is a terrifying uh, avatar. Yes, it is. For any of the listeners that want to see the picture that Derek is referring to right now, if you visit my Facebook page, if you do a search for Dogman Encounters on Facebook, you'll see my avatar at the top of the page. It's a picture of a dogman that's facing you. It's kind of a black and white, fairly small picture. That's what he's referring to when he says it, what he saw pretty closely resembles the subject in that picture. All right, Derek, it's time to wrap up the show. Do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? I suppose as a, just as a general outdoorsman, I'd just say be safe. Uh, Know your environment. Do research before you go go into the forest. Know what what could possibly lurk out there. I mean, as for these things, I mean, there's not a whole lot of research that you're going to be able to do to find them, I suppose. I mean, it seems like they're all over the, uh, all over the Midwest for the most part. So uh, just always be safe, and uh, if you have the opportunity to be armed, do so. Sounds like really good advice. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. I really appreciate you coming on, sharing all the details of this encounter. I hate the idea that it is bringing up bad memories, but I think it does serve a good purpose. So, again, thank you so much for coming on. No problem. I'm glad to uh, to share it again. I mean, uh, the first post I did was on a website, I don't know, like nine months ago. <laughs> and that's the first time I had ever talked about it since uh, since it actually occurred. Well, for a lot of people, I think talking is therapy, so I hope that this will help you at least in some way. Yeah, hopefully. I just hope I don't come across one again, and if I do, I mean, as much as I... I dislike needlessly killing an animal. I mean, if I'm armed, I will try to bring it down, and hopefully it will be uh, some sort of proof for the scientific community. I hope it never comes to that. I hope you never do run into one of these things again. I don't know. This thing just it seemed threatening, though. So, I mean, I suppose that would be the only reason why I would shoot at it, though. Yeah, they're, uh, they're terrifying. Well, thanks again, Derek, for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. You've been an absolute blast to talk to. Yep, you as well. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Oh, you're more than welcome. Have a great night. You too. Thanks. See ya. Bye. All right.